capacities and production capacity. Cameroon is forced to import foodstuffs from countries to which our own produce is exported. The more we import from those countries, the more those countries are ready to import from us. This has to do with international trade. Uh, you buy from us, we buy from you. The second reason is that Cameroon caters for so many other countries like Chad, Central African Republic, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon. Most of them have their food from Cameroon. They go to the villages, even to the farms, and buy food produced before it is even harvested. But this should present opportunities for us instead because if we have more people who want to buy our food, we should be able to produce more. Cameroon is utilizing only 12% of the arable land for food crop production, perennial crop production. Only 12% is being used. If we can even double the surface area cultivated, then we shall have food surpluses and more to export to neighboring countries. We have developed new varieties of crops which yield three times more than the traditional varieties. When we take a simple crop like maize, many of the local varieties yield 1.5 tons per hectare. The improved varieties we have developed yield 4 tons per hectare. We are talking about three times the yield of the traditional varieties. So there's every reason for growers to plant improved varieties. Are they using improved varieties you propose to them? They have been used to their local varieties over time. The varieties have passed the test of time. And they are used to them. Farmers are always resistant to adopt a new variety because they don't know how the fit of that variety will be. They say the quality is not good. They may say the quality is not good. It may be hit by a disease. The amount of talking we do to try to convince them appears to be inadequate. We need to just continue sensitizing the farmers about the importance of these varieties because before a variety is released, it has been tested with the best local variety. They should at least have that confidence in us. So that is where sociologists and uh, socioeconomists should come in. They have those tools to convince the farmer to play with the mentalities of the farmers and tell them this new technology is important for you. Why do we need to bank on these farmers who still use rudimentary tools when the government can just go ahead and open large plantations? Actually, in developed countries like the U.S., a single farmer has things like uh, 300 hectares of land uh, that is cultivating with modern inputs and tools like caterpillars and tractors and combined harvesters and uh, automatic planters and so on. In most African countries, the land tenure systems are so complex that only smallholder farmers we have to deal with for now. The few farmers who are doing large-scale cultivation cannot contribute effectively to uh, food production. We are still dealing with the smallholder the farmers who plant less than one hectare. The land is owned by families who protect that land even at the detriment of the country. As a Director General of Ibrad, how do you feel when you hear that Cameroon is spending 120 billion CFA francs to import rice when we have about 7 million hectares to grow rice? Uh, we feel bad, but we have developed the technologies. Actually, we shall get there. It's a gradual process. Varieties now which can be grown in all the places. You go to the Agric Show village in uh, Bolova and you see that rice, which used to be a white man's crop, is grown locally. We are asking if the results of your research findings are actually applied. They are being applied by growers. We, are, so we have passed through so many projects to be able to reach the farmers. As you know, the research develops technologies under the Ministry of Scientific Research. Then there's another agency, the Ministry of Agriculture, which does the transfer of the technologies to the growers. That synergy needs to be improved, you know, between uh, Ministry of Scientific Research and Ministry of Agriculture, so that all the technologies that we develop reach the Ministry of Agriculture, and then they are passed over to the farmers very quickly. Could you give us some examples of where we can go to verify, to see the results of your research findings oh, being yeah. applied? They are being adopted at a, at a very low pace. There must be some activity, some enzymatic activity to foster this adoption of improved technologies. That's what is lacking. The land is there. The seedlings are there. What is the problem hindering them from attending this production? First of all, in other countries where large-scale production is possible, there are many things which have been made easy. First, the land tenure system is not there. One who is capable of planting can plant as much as he likes. But this is not the case in Cameroon. You plant only in the small area that is available to you. 
So the land tenure system has to be arranged somehow. The second thing is that we have agricultural inputs, you know, fertilizers and herbicides and pesticides, which are supposed to be subsidized to enable these farmers improve their productivity per unit area. If you don't apply fertilizer in rice farms, you get about a quarter of the production. Of course, if you don't improve varieties, so you are only using, you're getting about one third of the total yield. The inputs like agricultural fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, the varieties themselves, and so on need to be there for things to work. When young farmers start an activity and they have only the resources to cultivate half a hectare, before they make profit out of that half hectare to be able to make a large farm of our five hectares will take a lot of time. Whereas if they had a source of agricultural credit where they could go and pick up some money and start a big farm of about 10 hectares at once, that will make them propel faster than starting with a small half a hectare farm. We don't produce fertilizer anywhere in Cameroon. We import everything. And if it's imported, the farmer cannot uh, buy one by of fertilizer for 15 20 000 francs for a small hectare of production if fertilizers were produced locally or if they were subsidized farmers would use them easily and increase their productivity per unit area now another thing which is lacking is mechanization the time has passed when the farmer has to use a small hole to till and so on. the farmers are aging the young farmers want modern techniques because they have learned about mechanization in school and so on and they don't want to go to this system of hoeing and so on. Mechanization needs to be improved so that farmers can organize themselves in cooperatives and hire agricultural machines like tractors, prepare large surfaces to be able to plant large surfaces also. And of course, it's tied up with how much land is available. So somebody must make that decision about making land available to people who really want to use it. How do you make available your information to the public. It's a story which is so sweet to tell that the research results are kept in drawers. But every year we have a mini agric show. We call it Jezik, Journée d'Excellence de Recherche Scientifique et de l'Innovation, where we show all the results we have in every region to farmers. I think the marketing of research results has to be improved because the traditional thinking earlier was to train a lot of plant breeders, agronomists, pathologists, and so on to produce the crop. Now that mechanism of transferring the technology is done by social scientists who need to be really trained now in large numbers to be able to carry this information to the growers. The mechanism of working effectively with the Ministry of Agriculture must also be improved because we can do all that. The, all the farmers in the country are divided according to village extension zones, all headed by a, a certain village extension agent of the Ministry of Agriculture. So if the Ministry of Agriculture could take all our results and just distribute to all these village extension zones, the information will reach all the farmers very quickly. What you are saying is that we organize open days and they come to you. Why don't you go to them? Well, we go to them when we identify constraints. We don't develop technologies or results by just staying in the station. We go to them to find out what their problems are. And when they tell us, okay, this variety is low yielding or it is susceptible to this disease, we come to the station and develop the technology. And when the results are obtained, we go back to the farmers and we give them the results of the new technology we developed in response to the constraint they told us they had. Normally, at first, it used to be such that the research did not go straight to the farmer. So, Let's take a concrete example, yeah. sir. Yeah. I'm a potato farmer. Can I move to your office to explain my needs? Oh, yes, you can. And you can get your results right there. All the farmers who want to grow potatoes come to Bambui, they are trained by us, and then given the varieties right there, and they go and plant. But I'm saying that for all the farmers to be touched, the information has to pass through the village extension agents who are under the Ministry of Agriculture. We don't have the resources to touch all the farmers of the country. So what does it take for a farmer to benefit from your services? Let us say I have my farm and I've prepared the fields and um, I need to grow, let us say, plantains. No, that's easy. That's straightforward. You come to us, we give you the suckers, we give you a technical handout. You sell or you give? No, we sell the, the suckers at a very reduced price. <laughs> no, if you sell it for a small price, then there's value to it. We sell you the plantain suckers and we give a technical handout on how to plant. If you are not literate, we direct you to some research technician near your own area who can tell you how to plant, to maintain the crop, take care of diseases and pests. 
there are many figures that have been put out by the Ministry of Agriculture. For rice, they are saying they want to hit 500,000 tons by 2015. For plantains, they say by 2015, they want to begin producing 3.2 million tons. What will it take for us to get there? First, the land tenure system must be organized. You don't get there by using land by force, taking land by force from a farmer. You go to the Mbam area, you see large expanses of land, just abandoned there. But somebody owns it and does not want it to be used by any person other than him. So the land tenure system must be arranged. If we can even cultivate 24%, we are going to reach that market that I'm preaching about. That's the first thing. Agricultural credits should be given to these young guys who want to do farming. The third thing is that agricultural inputs must be made available to growers either in subsidized form or to be manufactured locally. The agriculture depends on fertilizer use because you cannot cultivate one piece of land over and over and you don't deplete its fertility. You deplete its fertility and you need to improve that fertility by adding fertilizer. The mechanization must be encouraged. You cannot reach that mark by planting with a hoe and uh, harvesting with a machet or a hoe. We have passed that stage and we can never reach that mark if we don't mechanize agriculture in Cameroon. You are somebody who manages researchers in Cameroon. What is your most outstanding product you can sell to the rest of the world? So we have rice varieties, maize varieties, cassava varieties, plantain varieties all over. Farmers come in large numbers here to collect perennial crops, stimulant crops like coffee and cocoa. We give seedlings all the time to growers and even the, in the sub region. In animal production, is the same thing. In uh, fish production, is the same thing. We are producing fingerlings now whenever there's hunger in the north we have developed varieties which produce in less than three months the maize serves as a famine crop at a time when sorghum is not in large quantities so all these uh, technologies are available and they should be used by growers and we shall also go to the people and make an attempt to even bypass the traditional roots of reaching the farmer so that they can benefit from the research results that the taxpayer is spending so much money to let us develop the general manager of IRAD, Professor Jacob Mbwa Ngeve, talking to C.C. Smokey, Edwin Kinzika, and Henry McCauley. You are listening to Cameroon Calling from the National Station of the Cameroon Radio Television, the CRI.